Hello there, Thursday the 13th of April to 13th. Did I say 30th? Thursday the 13th. I need new teeth. What do you reckon? These are okay, aren't they, for now? Do you want me to take them out? <laughs> no! All my own teeth. I'm promising you now. All my own teeth. Yes. Which is more than we can say for some of the viewers watching this programme today, isn't it? You know who you are. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome along. Now, we must, we must absolutely try and restrict. We must try and restrict ourselves today to a maximum, an absolute maximum of half an hour today, OK? I'm determined to do that, possibly even 20 minutes, because the shows seem to be getting longer and longer and longer, lovey. And I'm sure you can't cope with watching me the more than a few minutes at a time without touching yourselves. So we must, especially if you're at work, it can be very, very dangerous because we do have a lot of secret viewers secret viewers. Some just listen, which is OK. You know, they can't bear to look at the beauty that is protruding from their computer screens and those tiny little screens on their iPhones. And for those of poor people with Android devices, boys and girls, Android, please do not embarrass yourself by ringing this programme up and telling me that you are watching or listening on an Android phone. Please don't embarrass yourselves. Anyway, so last night was quite good, boys and girls. Um, sort of a longish journey into work last night, but I didn't notice it, strangely enough. When you're sitting, you know, I just love that new car I've got. I've had it a good six months. I'm still not bored with it yet. So that must, that's, that's very good news, isn't it? I was chatting uh, my mate's... Um, uh, other half, Andy, went to look at a new car yesterday. Oh, yes, BMW. What is it? Is it a Mark IV? A former? Oh, God, I can't remember. Four Series. A BMW 4 Series. Now, at the moment, he's got a BMW 2, one or two series, one of those. And um, <clears throat> the trade in. I think he has to pay another couple of thousand pounds as a deposit. And then the repayments remain the same. That's good, isn't it? I mean, they're beautiful cars, BMWs. Don't get me wrong. BMWs, um, Jaguars, although they're lovely cars. But I'm not personally, I'm not really a badge person. Uh, I don't mind what a car is is made by as long as it's comfortable. Number one, absolutely number one, reliable. Car must be reliable. And I've now had four Toyotas, all of which have been extremely reliable. Those Japanese know how to make cars, dear. They're reliable as anything. They really are reliable. So number one, reliable, and number two, comfortable, <clears throat> which is what I have. Um, you know, I, 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 and, and I'm not really a badge person, but that doesn't mean to say they're not nice cars. They are indeed. They're very, very nice. Um, so I drove into work. We had a nice little quiz. Uh, Ray Reynolds was playing the quiz last night and sadly he didn't do too well at all. He came second. Which sounds good until I tell you there are only five teams. But that's not bad. They won the bottle of wine and there was a big, big row on the table afterwards. Oh, yes. Yes, when it came and the row was the selection of the bottle of the wine because Ray Reynolds wanted rosé. The choice is red, white or rosé, although sometimes there's only a choice of two if they run out. It's a very, very busy bar. Uh, that's a quiz night every Wednesday, although next week I won't be there. Next week, the quiz will be hosted by barman extraordinaire Charlie. Our good friend Charlie, who touched my bum last night. Did anyone notice that? Was anyone at the quiz like, he touched my bum in full view of everyone. And he hadn't cut his nails. Dreadful. Dreadful. Terrible marks I've got there now. I may have to go to the authorities and do one of those... Uh, cases that the people keep going there and say, oh, he touched me. I want £10,000. Pathetic. Pathetic. Most of those people, I've noticed that most of the people that write to the newspapers and say they're taking so-and-so to court because they felt them brush past them in a bar or something like that. Most of them are as ugly as sin. Have you noticed that? Virtually all the people that I ever see on the television or on the newspapers uh, uh, saying that someone has touched them or groped them in public are as ugly as sin. 
There were no good... I'm probably the only good-looking person that there's ever happened to. It's only the dogs that get touched. I'm sorry, that's how it is, lovey. I can only speak as I see. I'm yet to see a good-looking one who's been touched up by a Premier League footballer or something like that. They're all ugly. All of them. It's only me that's the good-looking one. Anyway, we go back to the story. Uh, so, the quiz night next week, hosted by Barman Charlie. And I think that's going to be the last time you see him, actually. Uh, no, don't worry, he's not going to be dragged out and killed or, 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 or beaten to death in the road. Like that man on Delta Airways. God's sake, man. <clears throat> Do you know when you buy an airline ticket that gives you no right to be on that plane. Did you know that? And it's, to be fair, it's not just Delta Airlines. There's a lot of them like that. You can be taken off the plane because they need the seat for someone else. At will. God's sake, man. Why would anyone... I keep telling you, you're wasting your time and money flying. Do not fly anywhere. Start going on caravan holidays in your own countries. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Oh, 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 hello, Mr. Bunce. I can do that, can't I? I can do the voice. Hello, Mr. Bunce. How are you? Oh, I bet they don't hit each other anymore. Oh, no, political correctness. Not allowed to do that anymore. Punch mustn't hit Judy. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bunce. Oh, oh, Mr. Bunce. <laughs> oh, no sense of humour, those people with politics, uh, with political correctness, aren't they? Uh, so we had the... Yes, there was a big row last night because Ray Reynolds wanted the rosé wine and someone else wanted the red wine. I thought there was going to be a fight. I thought there was going to be a fight. I'm sure at one point I saw Ray Reynolds attempt to bite the person who wanted the red wine. I'm sure I saw that last night. <clears throat> anyway, so that went on and it was all very nice. I had a lovely conversation with... Um, uh, there was a young couple and their friend, and we were talking about politics and all that. And he, we were so, we were completely different. This guy was hard left, and I'm kind of centre right. And we had this good conversation, and there was nothing. And we had uh, a couple of disagreements, but not like shouting or anything like that. It was very interesting, and, and uh, he was surprised at things that I did agree with, actually, uh, with him. Just because you're like one way or the other doesn't mean that you disbelieve everything on the other side. You know, it's true. And we had a lovely conversation, actually, with this bloke, and uh, uh, he went on his way. And it's a shame that people on Facebook aren't like that. And I've said this before, you know, they make their point, and then if you disagree with them, then you are evil and you must die. <laughs> I don't know how we ever got to that stage. I really don't. Um, let's say hello to some of our people arriving on the show today. So, as I say, nice, nice journey in last night. Uh, I said, no, not nice journey. It's about an hour and 45. So about 10 minutes longer than it usually is. And, um, uh, nice quiz, lovely quiz. I'm off next week. Charlie's hosting a host quiz. And on the way home, sadly, once again, uh, the, the tractor beam, the tractor beam that appears to be outside five gays, Five five gays, five guys restaurant in King's Cross drags me in there for some Cajun fries and yum 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 vanilla milkshake. No one makes vanilla milkshakes like they do in Five Guys. The McDonald ones, they're okay, but I, I've noticed they're very varying where you go. Some of them are not mixed properly. Some of them are not cold enough. Some of them are too cold. I don't know what it is with the McDonald's milkshakes. I mean, they are only two quid, so they're dirt cheap. But I don't know. There's, there's, and one of them wasn't mixed last week, and I took a suck. You know, I took... And, and that's the other thing, right? You used to almost, you know, kill the muscles on your cheeks trying to get this stuff out of the cup. Well, it's all runny and horrible now. What have they done to those milkshakes at McDonald's? They weren't like that when I was a child. Huh? And the other day, uh, I had a milkshake at, at one of the Bracknell McDonald's. And I wrote to them about this. No one's bothered to reply. Rude. No one's bothered to reply to me. And I had a strawberry milkshake. And I'm having it. And it well, tasted all right. And then all of a sudden, I got this really strong taste of strawberry. Where obviously the syrup, or whatever it is they use, hadn't mixed properly with the milkshake. Shocking. Not like that in Five Guys. Or the little Asian chicken shop that I go to sometimes uh, near Kew Bridge. He does, he does nice milkshakes. And he gets he gets ice cream out of a thing and a bit of milk. And I think he puts ice in there as well. And he puts... 
in this in this machine like that. And it, oh, delicious. Thank you very much, milkshake. Where are your favourite milkshakes? Put a message here and let me know. Good morning to Adam, who's with us this morning. Morning, Adam. Adam, I have information for you. Please stand by. Oh, hang on. There's someone at my front door. One moment, please. Let me just check on my mobile phone of my ring doorbell. Would you like to see it? Let's see who it is. It might be the postman. Might... Oh, it's a cat. But if you look carefully, can you see a cat there? A black cat there. Can you see that black cat there next to the pot? There it is. See it moving? Is it moving? Or maybe it's dead. Are you dead? No, it's sitting there. Every, every time I get a movement outside my front door, it records and sends me a message and I can watch live. You are watching live outside my house then. I mean, it doesn't get more exciting. That doesn't happen on BBC News 24, dear. Does it? Doesn't happen on the one show. One, one, one. What a boring show that is, isn't it? Oh, God, it's all so plastic and fake. Bring back Nationwide, that's what I say, with Michael Barrett and Frank Boff. Nationwide, yes, that's what we want back on here. Thank you very much. Adam, I have information for you. Simon Levans, DJ extraordinaire at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. I think that's the only job he does now, isn't it? They get paid very well for that one. Oh, God. you wouldn't believe how much those DJs get there on a Sunday. <gasps> I did it once. One. Oh, no, not that. Did I do that one? No, I didn't. I might have done. Only once. Years and years and years ago. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I took the month off after I got paid for that one night. God, say. Anyway, Simon Levans needs a plumber. Please contact him. You will find him on my friend's uh, Facebook thing, however you find that, OK? Simon Levans. Apparently his toilet will not flush. I'm not surprised here when he's used it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, you know, there are certain people you don't want to go into the toilet after. And Simon Levans is one of them, lovey. I'm sorry, call me old-fashioned. That's how it is. There's another bloke. Actually, there's another one who comes to Central Station. I can't reveal his name on this programme. But I have, been, not me, I have been advised by another customer who will remain nameless. No, I'm not going to tell you who it is, who advised me never, ever to go into the toilet after this person. If you know who this is, please do not reveal it on my Facebook wall. I don't want to get in trouble. Thank you. So please contact Simon Levans for plumbing work. Thank you. Uh, tell him I sent you along, dear. Uh, good morning to Daniel Rolfe in Camberley. Camberley. Gary Chenney, he says, yes, only 20 minutes. We must do 20 minutes. No, no I've, I've got to go out anyway soon. I have a hospital appointment. Now you're all wondering what it is. I may tell you. I may tell you. Or I might keep you guessing. I'm going to I've got to have some of my personality removed. That's why I'm going. I'm going to have personality because there's too much of it now. It's just overflowing. It's overflowing. And the personality has come up so much. I haven't even got time to take phone calls anymore. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? <laughs> Um, good morning to Dean. Good morning, Dean. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, Ray B, who is in charge of all cakes and bread at Morrison's in Queensbury. Good morning, Ray. James Clark, United Airlines. Ta, 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 ta. <laughs> and that's it, OK? Are we at 18? We can't be at 18 minutes. We cannot be at 18. It's 14 minutes. Ah, you've included the five-minute countdown. Do pay full attention to the programme, Adam, dear. All right. So 18 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> some of the Manilo girls who watch the programme, glad you really enjoyed the QVC programme, which was on in uh, the United States last night. QVC. Barry Manilo was there live. Look, as indeed I am live. Barely alive. Uh, as indeed I am live as well. He was um, selling his new um, album. So uh, glad you enjoyed that, boys and girls. Um, yes, the the QVC on last night. Now, I believe there is... Um, Wendy sent me a little link there. There it is. Um, they've put... QVC have put a 15-minute section up for playback of last night's Manilow programme. There it is. Oh, hang on. 
can't play that. Very illegal for me to play someone else's stuff. So I'll stick that. Where shall I put that? Actually, I'll put it on here. I'll put this as a comment on there and you can watch that later if you want. OK, one moment, please. There we are. There's a little YouTube link there of the Barry Manilow thing. There it is uh, on in within the comments of this program. OK, so that's if you want to watch it a little bit later. Let's do some uh, news stories this morning. Look at this. Look at this. Do you want to go to space? This is in the Daily Mail this morning. There's a lot of people out there who want to take one of those first flights into space. Cost you an arm and a leg, mate, probably. You'll probably have to sell your house for just a quick trip into space. Blue Origin. But, but it's not all good news. Not all good news. Blue Origin, the rocket company owned by Amazon CEO, has plans to send tourists 62 miles above the surface of the Earth next year. Would you like to fly there? Would you love it? Uh, but if you're planning on taking part in one of the historic flights to the edge of space, uh, the bloke has a bit of a bar bizarre advice. Go to the bathroom in advance. Oh, yes. At the 33rd annual... <laughs> this, is a bit of a, uh, this is a bit of a mouthful, this is. Are you ready for this? At the 33rd um, annual space sim symposium? Symposium? Sim sim I don't know. Uh, ben Zoss, he's the bloke who's doing it all, uh, revealed that the craft will not have a system in place to accommodate passengers that need to relieve themselves. And the firm is not going to worry about the possibility of vomit. Oh, no, 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 no. From the moment the passengers board until the time the craft touches back down, the bloke says the trip will last just about 40 minutes and the flight itself will only take up 11 of those minutes. How much is that going to cost then? What's that work out per minute? That's probably even more expensive than it is to hire me for a night. It really is. But during this time, passengers will be subjected to weightlessness and will even be able to unbuckle their seatbelts. You can't even do that in a car in this country, dear. You've got to remain strapped down. Strap them down. Um, and we'll even be able to unbuckle their seat minutes for about four seat belts for about four minutes to feel the full effects. It's known as weightlessness can cause motion sickness. Whoa, oh, no. In those that experience it. But Bezos, he's the bloke in charge, says the passengers are going to be fine. Go to the bathroom in advance, Bezos says at the sim symposium. What's that? I don't know what that says. According to space.com. The whole thing from boarding until you're back on the ground is about 40 or 41 minutes. So you're going to be fine. You could dehydrate ever so slightly if you have a weak bladder. <laughs> According to the billionaire, vomiting doesn't occur until about three hours into a flight. So the firm is not concerned that this might happen. <laughs> so take your own nappies, boys and girls. You can <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have to take your own... There's no toilet on board. I wouldn't be able to go... Not with my IBS, dear. How would I be able to go? Not possible for me to go on such a flight. Thank you very much. No. <laughs> uh, good morning to Kevin Webster, who says he likes the red shirt. Thank you, Kevin. I've only got one red shirt, actually. I think I wore this uh, a couple of weeks ago. Do make a request. If you've got an item that you want me to wear at any point, then feel free to ask and I shall do, I shall do my best possibly to, um, uh, to, to wear it just for you. you know, anything you want. Red shirt, green shirt, pink tutu. I don't mind what it is, darling. You request, I wear. OK. Uh, nice little uh, uh, Facebook update status from... One moment, please, if I can just refer to my preparation I made earlier. Yes, from Darren Lee Wicks, who sends us a United Airlines slogan, the new United Airlines slogan, as, as, as seen on Facebook. If we, if we cannot beat our competitors, we beat our customers. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Mr. Darren Lee Wicks. Always a pleasure to see your little happy face appearing on my Facebook wall. Very nice indeed, OK? Uh, another story here, boys and girls. The Pope. The Pope. I love it. That's the credo. Look it up. Credo 3 on YouTube. If you like religious type music and chanting and all that, look up Credo 3. As in 1, 2, 3, Roman numerals, boys and girls. Roman numerals. 
there's someone watching this programme uh, at this moment who was around when Roman numerals were invented, weren't you, Ray Reynolds? Yes, good morning. Uh, the Pope has cancelled all official engagements for the remainder of the year as he stepped up his efforts to engage with young people and put a stop to dwindling congregations, boys and girls. Dwindling conversation. Just a moment, please. Dwindling congregations. The head of the Catholic Church uh, has turned to the tech industry for inspiration, focusing particularly on the success of viral apps and games. Uh, disregarding the voice concerns of senior Vatican officials, Pope Francis launched his new campaign at last month's TechCon in Silicon Valley. A bemused audience of tech geeks and developers listened as God's chosen voice on earth heralded a sea of change in the fortunes of organised religions. He announced that immediately after the conference he would go to ground somewhere in continental Europe, sparking a manhunt of unprecedented proportions. The first lucky gamer to discover and take a photograph of him using the Popamon app will win a free pass to the promised land. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? It's better than winning a game of Monopoly, it is. Since the launch some three weeks ago, Pope, Pope, Popamon, Pope, not Poker, Popamon, it's going to be called, Popamon downloads have been underwhelming while analysts of social media traffic does not indicate any substantial efforts to locate the 79-year-old. Where is he hiding? Naughty Pope, hiding from us somewhere. A Vatican source was not unduly surprised by the teething problems, recalling that the Holy Father has always been a committed hider. During a previous Vatican Games Hour, he recounts the Pope burying beneath the floor tiles of the Basilica, resulting in a fractured clav <laughs> clavicle. He was under there for four days and refused to come out until God said it was a sign that he had won. Petro had put some food colouring in the font and declared a miracle before he let the fire brigade cut him free. So there's a little story about the Pope this morning, boys and girls. That's a nice story, isn't it? I quite like the idea of that. Popamon. Popamon, that would be nice. Adam says, please could you wear your birthday suit, Chris, on the next show. No, 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 dear. No, no, no. There will be no... This is not a babe station, dear. If you want to watch that mucky stuff, then that's entirely up to you, but I won't have anything to do with it. This is a family programme, as I keep telling you. Day in, day... Oh, there's a phone call coming in. Just a moment, please. Hello? Hello there. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, are you open tomorrow? Um, Tomorrow, maybe? Tomorrow? Oh, sh hopefully be in tomorrow, then. If not, it'll be uh, next week now, OK. Thanks very much, Andy. Bye-bye. Bye. Now that, that bloke on there, I've, um, you know that picture I don't know, <laughs> about nine months ago, I purchased a picture on eBay of an, a young up-and-coming Polish artist. And it's a picture of London, it's a London picture. And it has sat in my house for months and months waiting to be, well, I, I thought you went and had them framed, but apparently you've got to have them stretched first. I mean, if I could be stretched, I'd probably be able to lose some of this weight. But you have these pictures stretched first and he's just rung to tell me it's ready. So that's good. I went up to a framing centre. It's in Bracknell, actually, in the town centre. And I went up to this framing place and took my, my rolled up picture up there and gave it to him. And uh, uh, and it's all done. Hopefully I'll be able to pick that up sometime tomorrow, perhaps, before I go to... Um, uh, before I go to the special uh, Good Friday Mass that we have uh, tomorrow. At, uh, to, uh, to all the Catholic churches everywhere. Uh, while I was in there, I must say there were some beautiful pictures in there. Very pricey, I thought. I quite liked, I don't know if you've seen them before, glass. They're like pictures and they seem to be made of glass. Or at least they've got some sort of glass coating with like bits. Say, say if it was my face, the ears might be actually sticking out of the picture. Do you know what I mean? And had this coating of glass on them. I don't know exactly what they're called, but there was some stunt, and I was very tempted. But they were, we're, we're talking two, three, four hundred pounds for a picture. I mean, they were really, really nice. <clears throat> and my friend, uh, Wayne, who works at the Skinner's place in, uh, in Cannon Street. Um, he he was uh, uh, he was saying, Chris, if you ever see a picture and you want it, you need to buy it then because next time you go, it'll be gone. You know, and there's some, there's, there is some truth in that, I think, really. Uh, how are we doing? 24 minutes? Okay. 
All right, boys and girls. Uh, one more story, I think. Should we do one more story? What's the time? Oh, it's, it's, I'm pushing it now. I've got to go to the hospital later. Uh, I'm going to see a dietitian today. I'm going to see a dietitian. Okay, all to do with my stomach uh, thing, that is. All right. Final story today. BA threatens. Now, you, 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 if you watch the show a lot, then you'll know I've been talking about British Airways. They've removed the, um, the nice meals and that. They have an economy and they've been replaced by sandwiches and fun size Mars bars. Ridiculous. British Airways used to be renowned for their service. I don't know what the hell is going on. What idiot is running that now? I bet he's not English. I bet he's from somewhere else. And it's, it's all about saving money. People have forgotten what service is and all they want to do is save money. Well, in the Daily Mail, now this was a few days ago, I think it was on Monday, yeah, Monday's Daily Mail. Uh, British Airways may, so it's not, not definite yet, may introduce charges for meals on long-haul flights in economy class at the same time as cramming in more seats. How many more seats can you get on a plane? Blimey, the airline has already called controversy by ditching free food on short haul services in favour of sandwiches from Marks and Spencers, uh, which is, you know, which are nice enough, but you just don't expect it on British Airways, do you? And it's, I mean, the, the, the Arab airlines seem to have it down to a T, don't they? Um, I get very, very good reports from Emirates and Ethiad, Ethiad, and another one. There's another one as well. Quantar. Quatar. Quatar. Is it Quatar? Quatar. I get very good reports from people that have been on those. Um, the British Airways, so I'm, I'm getting bad reports from them now. And I've always flown on them. Um, it says, it seems that the policy could be extended now to economy seats on long haul flights to the US, Caribbean and Far East. At the same time, the airline is adding an extra seat into each row on many flights in a further move to becoming a no-frills airline for people on a budget. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, while economy passages are offered packed sandwiches and tighter seating, club world travellers will enjoy a new culinary bouquet experience. BA is pouring £400 million into upgrading the luxury for customers who turn left when boarding its aircraft. Club World um, customers, and I've, I've flown Club World on many occasions. It is really nice. It is not cheap. It's something you've got to save up hard for if you want to do something like this. Club World customers can also look forward to new, more comfortable seating because from July, seats will come with a fresh new linen, Bigger pillows, a soft mattress, topper and a duvet. Oh, a duvet as well. It just gets better and better. From September, passengers will also enjoy new restaurant-style premium dining service with display trolleys allowing customers to select dishes from a choice of freshly prepared starters and desserts. So that sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Um, but um, they just keep cutting their blooming costs on there all the time, don't they? Right, let's do today's birthdays. And there has today... Being an item of fake news, boys and girls. I shall reveal what the fake news is um, on the show after today's birthdays. Happy birthday today to Paul Gallagher. He is 41 years old today. Happy birthday, Paul. All right. Nice to see you, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. Adam Phillip is 25 years old today. Happy birthday, Adam. Coelho... Morandi is nice, young, 23 today. Love, love your little dog that you've got there. Happy birthday, uh, Coelho. Uh, Julie Page. Hello, Julie. Molly Moggs. No longer with us, I, uh, I'm afraid, uh, Molly Moggs. Uh, Julie Page did that so well. I never actually got a chance to come in and see you in there, Julie. But uh, it's always nice to see a little face pop up on Facebook. OK, happy birthday, Julie. I hope you get somewhere else soon, darling. All right, 51 today. Uh, Andrew Bozzett. Hello, Andrew Bozzett. Happy birthday to you. Joss. Lochnan. Joss Lochnan. Is that how you say it? Or Lonan, I think it is. 28 today. Joss is a lovely chap. He lives uh, in a small place in the middle of Australia somewhere. I think in the out, possibly in the outback, are you? A small town somewhere. Happy birthday, Josh. He used to come to Belushi's a few years ago and we had such a laugh with him. Uh, Mackenzie Clark Hathaway. Happy birthday. Alf Short today is 51 years old. Oh, Alf. Julie, Alf, Julie, Alf. So many different titles there. And Dominic Forbes today. I can't believe, Dominic, you are 48 years old today. Happy birthday to you all, gang. Uh, here comes the song. 
Whatever you're doing on this wonderful Thursday. Uh, and now, boys and girls, what was today's item of fake news? Did you work it out? We are fighting the fake news. It's fake. fake. Phony. Fake. fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people. Enemy and of they the are. people. They are the enemy, enemy of the people. They're very dishonest people. That dishonest. I called the fake news fake the enemy news. of the people. The fake, fake news. news. Fake. And now I'm saying, oh, no, this is no good. But you are fake news. fake news. But I am only against the fake news media or press. Fake. 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 It's all fake, boys and girls. And today's item of fake news was the story about the Pope launching an app called Popeman Go. There is no Popeman Go app. I'm sorry, those of you that are Catholics like myself are so disappointed. We thought we were going to go over there and look for the Pope, boys and girls, in all those little nooks and crevices that are everywhere. That is today's item of fake news. Everything else is true. Sadly, including the one about British Airways. Anyway, that's it for the show today. There is an email there that I didn't quite get to today, boys and girls, uh, from Chris Lotz in the USA. Sorry about that, Chris. Uh, I have got it here. I'll read it out for you, uh, possibly in the next show, all right? Enjoy your Thursday. I must get ready now. Brush my teeth. I, no, I brush my teeth. I must get ready today's hospital appointment for the dietitian and see what he's got to tell me. See you later. Have a nice Thursday. Cheerio now.